Hello, and welcome to the Travel Unpacked podcast, where we are going to talk all things travel from the silly to the serious and everywhere in between. I am your host, Ashley Newton, and today we are going to talk about travel fashion, what we wear when we're traveling, what we see people wearing when we're traveling, and all our opinions about it. So I am not exactly the most stylish person out there. So to talk about this today, I have invited Bill Coyle to the show, who is a frequent traveler and a pretty darn snazzy dresser. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thanks so much, Ashley. Appreciate being here, and I'm excited to talk about all things fashion while traveling. Me too. So, Bill, I asked you today to kind of wear something that you might wear traveling. So can you tell our audience what you're wearing today, Bill? It's not Givenchy. <laughs> today is just a shirt that I got. I'm kind of, um, I've, I've become someone who's trying to adapt to my destination better. Instead okay. of wearing clothes that I would wear here, like on a Saturday night or Friday night or at work, I'm starting to adapt to clothes that should be worn there. So just before I went to Greece this past year, I got this shirt along with some shorts that match it. Um, it's kind of maybe Tommy Bahama-ish, but not to that extreme. So it's more of a, just a Joseph Abood shirt. Yeah, it's very like neutral tones. It's got this really pretty like palm print on it. It does scream vacation. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. But good you brought up something really interesting, which I was going to save till the end of the show, but we're oh, going to dive right into it anyway. And that's the idea of dressing for your destination. So I'm actually planning a trip to Ireland. So I've been looking up you know, what is the natural culture there as far as their their fashion and their attire. And right away, everything I'm seeing is like, well, they're not as casual as the U.S. That's and I, correct. Isn't that true for a lot of places? Though? Like, we're so casual here. Absolutely. And I think clothes that um, look dressy are what they consider casual. But their level of dress, um, mostly anywhere in Europe, uh, Italy, Italy, Ireland in particular, I love how they dress with the full colors, the thick sweaters, um, long sleeve shirts, um, yeah. trousers. You know, they're just really into that European style, except kind of in a more um, environment that's probably a little chillier, a little cloudier sometimes. Um, and they adapt well to that. So I love getting ready for there because of the different shoes that we're going to wear there or even oh, socks gosh. that you got to wear there. So be prepared for that. Yeah, you know, that's so funny. I just ordered a pair of waterproof shoes, but, you know, being in Cleveland, I'm like, I'm going to use them all the time, just like around here in the snow in the winter and everything. But so that that's the practical aspect of dressing yes. for travel, which I think is where most people sort of start. But I was thinking even of all of these notions about when you're traveling to France or Italy, there's this idea that the average person there just dresses... Oh. A little bit more uh, high class. I don't yes. know. I don't want to offend yes. anybody, but it's like no, very agree. more put together. You know, you're not just going to like run to the store with leggings and a mus messy bun. And I, <laughs> Bill's face is you like, are oh so my gosh. Right. We, America has become a t-shirt nation, right? So t-shirts are the big thing. They're not big things over there. Most of the men are wearing collared shirts and they're a nice stiff collar, typically lighter colors. Um, in New York, we wear darker clothes, right? That's just as, that's just a fashion that we do. Over there, we're wearing nice, crisp, light-colored clothes, um, but sharp as ever. Tucked-in shirts, um, belts always. See, now, I had read that, like, uh, college shirts and sports T-shirts and stuff is not really something you'll see anywhere outside the U.S., but I didn't realize that even, like, a plain black T-shirt... You know, like that's not something that Correct. you're gonna see like no, in Europe. No, you will not see that in Europe. Wow. So would people just be like this bummy American? Like, are they gonna? <laughs> they spot know you right, right away. away. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So we don't even have to wear our red, white, and blue uh, jackets, right? It's oh, just this idea that. Gosh, what a good point, though. Patriotic attire. Yes. I would never. I mean, granted, that's not really my style anyway. But like the idea of going anywhere outside the country dressed up in like Americana. Yeah. No. Do you see that, though, as a traveler? Do you see people? Travelers do that all the time. Really? Absolutely, yes. And it, and it shocks me. And I think from when I first started traveling, especially over to Europe, um, I was dressing like an American. I thought, hmm, I don't see many other people dressing like Americans who are residents or citizens here. So I started to adapt to their way. And sometimes I'll even shop there. But as Americans, we have to be careful of size differences and style yeah, differences yeah. because their sizes are much different than ours. Well, and here's... Here's the thing, like I don't necessarily need to be the most stylish person in the room. I never am, so I'm very used to that. 
but also I don't really mind if people go, oh, that's a tourist. That mm-hmm. doesn't bother me personally because of course I am <laughs> like yeah, that. Of right. course I am. Good point. But I hate feeling underdressed. That just really stresses me out. Even if I'm just going out to dinner somewhere here and maybe it's the first time trying a restaurant and I didn't realize maybe the sort of dress code of the people that are going to be there and, you know, you roll up in jeans and everybody else is like yes. decked out. Like that makes me nervous. So what do how do you feel like what is your goal for when you're traveling for your appearance no matter what clothes that i happen to bring as long as i have shoes and a jacket or a coat when you say jacket or coat do you mean like dressy no just something like um something a little bit more uh not a sport coat is what i'm saying i'm talking about because sport coats aren't that popular unless you are on a cruise ship or you're doing something more formal there but a jacket or a coat lightweight jacket or a coat that shows that i could live there because it's nondescript, right? It's okay, not so no like big brand up. names or something correct. either. Then they're right? just not into that. That's yeah. absolutely correct. See, well, and I, I like that. You know, I've never been like a big brand gal, probably because those things are expensive. <laughs> yes, yes, we're just paying for that name brand. <laughs> yeah, but see, now you brought up cruises, so that gets me thinking though about like all inclusives. People don't do that for like the fancy dining options at all inclusives. They don't wear their little sports jackets, or they're not like required to. All inclusive, which is our typical in Mexico and Caribbean market, mm-hmm. um, is not a sport jacket anymore. It used to be occasionally uh, like the cruise ships, but no, they've gone to collared shirts with pants for men, clothes-toed shoes Yeah, for See, men. and that's something I've liked about cruising and all-inclusives is they kind of tell you. Yes. Like, right when you're booking, like, these are the sort of outfits you'll want to wear, or these are your formal nights, and so it kind of helps you pack. But if you're just doing, a, like, all-on-your-own trip somewhere, you don't have that little yeah, notice. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, so you got to do that research, or if that even matters to you. Yes. You know, well, you, that's a good point. It. Maybe it doesn't matter, right? That's a very good point. And I'm not saying that it, it should be something that's the most important part of it. Uh, but I, I think that if we're going to travel often or frequently or we want to fit in or we want to look like a local or go to where the locals are, we might want to partake in a little bit of the dress portion of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like we covered a lot about in destination. Yeah, sorry. But I, no, no, I love it. But I do want to talk a little bit about the things that I see when traveling that to me, I'm like, hmm, I have some opinions about this. So how do you feel when you see like those custom t-shirts? Like I feel like they're really popular with theme park vacations or cruising or, you know, it'll be like so-and-so's family reunion with a big like graphic on it. Like what are what are your thoughts when you see those, Bill? That is so funny. Oh gosh, I'm going to upset so many people here. I, I think sometimes it's just a little bit, it could be a little bit annoying for me sometimes yeah. and I, I love that that theme walks through I think let's just say you're on a seven night cruise or a five day cruise wearing them once is cool every day is too much so unless you're going to get a different t-shirt for every day I probably wouldn't do that but I, I still think it's a cool aspect it's something people want to show off it's maybe something you're going to read and maybe there's a hashtag on there or maybe there's someone that you're going to follow but for the most part for me it's a little bit annoying I hate it. Okay. I hate it. If somebody <laughs> okay. were to be like, hey, Ash, I'm planning a cruise, and nobody calls me that, so nobody would say that. Okay. But if somebody was like, I'm planning a cruise, and we're all going to wear these booze and cruise and t-shirts, then you have to pay twenty four ninety nine for it. Right. I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Thank you. But I do think the one sort of pass that I'll give you is when you got small kids. Because that, I think, is a nice little like visual way to find your kid in a crowd or yes. on, the, on the deck or something. And like... That's fun family photos. So if you're doing, but in the end of the day, you do you. You do whatever you want. Like you, I love that. You dress however you want, but no people are probably going to have opinions about it. So a good example of that, that idea to pick them out of a crowd, we're leaving for Switzerland uh, in two weeks. Of course you are. And this is what I mean. Frequent traveler. <laughs> right. like, never and sits so still. for the whole group, there's 33 of us. We got matching scarves for everyone. Oh, okay. But did you... Did everybody have to fork over the cash? No, we're we're treating everyone with these. So. See, that's a nice gift. I would love. Yeah. I never say no to gifts, right, but like yeah. if if it's mandatory and I have to pay for it on top of all the other travel expenses, I'm like, no, for a shirt, a shirt that's gonna sit in the bottom yes. of my oh. drawer. Oh my and gosh, just, I have so many. 
Yeah. It's ridiculous. No, I won't even get started on the Bachelorette thing because that's going to be a whole other episode when y'all are really going <laughs> to get to know me well in that episode because I have opinions. But another thing that you see a lot, especially with like beach vacations, is not the custom shirts, but the matching attire where everybody looks business casual. Like everybody's just wearing these khakis and the white linen or the blue linen or whatever. And it doesn't matter from the grandpa to the baby. Everybody looks the same. And you can see them all marching down to the shore to do their photos. Who took the time to do all of that? That drives me absolutely crazy. I feel bad and I don't want to upset anyone, but I mean, that's a, that's to an extreme. And it's, it's weird to me because your family doesn't always dress the same all the time. So why do you want everybody totally matching right. We don't the do that at home photo. on Mondays, Fridays, and Sundays. Yeah. I could weird. see maybe being like everybody dressed cute. You know, yes. everybody like look a little nicer, like get weird out of your thing. swim trunks yes. or something for the photo. But it cracks me up. I love watching everybody, you know, from the beach house. Like, they all go down and we'll just laugh. And we'll be like, I mean, good for them. They're making a good moment, a good memory together. But I feel like I can already picture what that living room looks like, where that (laughs) that photo's going to hang. You know, but, you know, you you do you. Yeah, you do you. But have you ever done one? Have you been forced to do, like, a group photo shoot like that? Uh, Well, when we go on certain trips, we'll have a white night, maybe, where everyone's wearing white. Uh, The last trip that I was on... Um, everyone had to wear something pink to okay. something. So, so these we are had to kind do it. of matchy themes. Yes, yes, they are a little matchy theme places. But um, uh, there's typically, there's one evening where you'll have to wear something. Oh, gosh, there was a 60s party the other night when we were in Palm Springs. And Bill ducked out of it a little bit. Like, I, I what am I going to wear to a 60s party? Throw on a wig. I don't know, wear something. But I just, I'm not a theme person. I want to wear, I want to wear something I feel comfortable in that I yeah. feel is appropriate for that evening. But they wanted us to be 60s garb. So I went, said hi, and got out. That's where the switch flips for me completely. I love themes. I love really? theme parties. I throw them. I go all out. Like, oh I love asking my friends to get in costume, but... I don't know why it's different to me. (laughs) I don't know why I feel that way, but they're like separate in my brain. Yeah, I get it. And then another thing that I feel like people would immediately associate with travel, touristy, fashion, faux pas is the fanny pack. But I feel like the fanny pack is sort of making a movement now where they call it like a belt bag or a shoulder bag. And it's the same thing, but you don't wear it above yeah. your waist. So it's, it's fashionable now. It's a must. I, I don't do one because I'm still doing the backpack. But I'll be honest, the backpack's annoying. Right? Yeah, and okay. it's too much on and off of a bus or a train, on and off the planes. It's taking so much extra time to grab that backpack when in all essence a fanny pack or a cross bag, so much better. Do right? you think they scream tourists though, or are they entering no, more everyone's mainstream? Doing it. Everyone's doing it for security reasons, right? Yeah. Maybe our passport's in there, we have cash in there, so they want to make sure that it's secure. Backpacks can be taken. Um, I, to be honest with you, anywhere I've ever gone, I've never had a security issue, but people are just taking precautions, and I think that's part of the thought. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because... I saw that a lot as well when I was doing my research for this upcoming trip and trying to figure out what I needed. And everybody was like, get these security bags, get these, oh my gosh. you know, slash free, loop free. <laughs> and I'm like, how much crime are we like anticipating? And then it's like, oh, well, none really. Nobody's ever had to use it. <laughs> Nobody's ever had this <laughs> so problem. True. But we're just like really preparing we're for really it. We're really preparing. Anyway. Yes, exactly. Honestly, uh, Ashley, I've never had an issue. And you know, I've been quite a few places in my life, but yeah. I've never had an issue. I, I keep an eye out, and especially when we're going in a group, I'll keep an eye out on others. But I think that that's where that fanny pack or that crossbody bag came from. It's just that extra feeling of security. Yeah. And then with shoes, my big goal is always going to be comfort. Like, I really don't care that much when you get to that part of the outfit. Like, it's especially like if you're exploring and you're walking, yes. I feel like I would much rather be in a comfortable pair of shoes than anything that's going to give me blisters or like have you ever seen somebody walking around in heels specifically in a situation where you're like how are you doing this right now how are you doing it right now right what were you thinking when you left the hotel apartment or cruise ship this morning for god's sakes um and i will say recently i was on the camino trail um in spain and you saw everything right because there's some people who are just there for a portion of it who might just be going on the camino trail and doing a day tour and then going to dinner others are doing it for day after day after day so you'll see a whole variety of different uh clothing and different shoes some are wearing their you know their ski um what do you call those walkers um because it's it's big ski time walkers what are you, you know uh, poles Ski poles. They're wearing them? Well, they're they're having them with them, so it's all part of their garb, right? But They've got skiing, to keep them. not hiking poles? 
Because aren't those different? Oh, maybe they're different. <laughs> okay, skiing poles, hiking poles. I mean, I don't ski, but they are. I've hiked a little. <laughs> yes, I only use skiing poles. Yeah, hiking poles. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Bill. So, shoes. Hold on. With the shoe aspect, I agree with you that that's important, but think about packing shoes. Is that a whole separate Ugh. bag? Is that going into your main bag? Are you going to throw those in your backpack? So that's probably the other idea of packing shoes is not just comfort, but feasibility to bring shoes when you're packing. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say for me, I always wear my biggest shoes Smart. during my travel Perfect. days. Yes. But sometimes that does equal wearing like little booty, like chunky heels. Uh, and like sometimes airports. it's fine. And then other times you're the person running through the airport in the heels that even I'd be judging myself. Yeah. Like what, why did you do this? And we have to think that in Europe, for instance, when I was in Amsterdam a few months ago, you're going, not Amsterdam, sorry, I was in England. Oh, sorry. Uh, London I was in England, going not to, Amsterdam. <laughs> London going to Liverpool, right? So I'm going as a tourist from London to Liverpool. 99% mm. of people on that train are residents yeah, going like back commuters. and forth, either work or they're going to restaurants or going out for the evening. They're coming back from just a day trip. So there's all kinds of variations of what people are wearing. Well, and that made me think of something too. When you're traveling and you are traveling like a local, do you just have like your backpack and all of your like luggage with you? Is everybody else is just like have their wallet and their phone? Like everyone else just has their wallet and their phone, <laughs> or maybe just a phone. It's hilarious because there's people on those trains with luggage, like big amounts of luggage and you see them they have to take that thing down the cobblestone streets through the train station onto the onto the train it's unbelievable but that's the way to get around yeah absolutely yeah. it's like a training marathon and yes. like obviously everybody has their own way to pack and i swear everybody thinks they have the best tax but i even though I might not be the most stylish person i still like to look a little presentable and i don't like my clothes to get wrinkled uh. And that is why I swear by the I hate wrinkle... No, um, let me say this again. <laughs> this is why I swear by the I hate ironing anti-wrinkle spray. And no, this is not sponsored. I wish they'd pay me for it because I love this product so much. But it's so great. It's you excellent. just spray it. Pull, yes. Have you used this? I do have it. See, you struck me as somebody that would have like a travel iron. I like have an <laughs> iron and steamer. And I steam and iron my own clothes the minute I get there, right? So yeah. that I know that it's all there, boom, ready to take care of. So, but yes, I, I have had that spray and the spray does work in a pinch. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. No, Cause like, point. I like to shove as many clothes as I can in the bag and then they don't always look good. Shove. Oh my there. goodness. We got to roll. I am not a roller. Oh, I actually goodness. am so against rolling. It is crazy. I will sit there and I will try this method and then I'll just undo everything and pack it my way and I feel like I fit so much more. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I went to the rolling method a few years ago and it's worked well for me. And it's mostly because of the grooves in our suitcase. Yeah. We have grooves in the suitcase for those for the bar that you pull it with. Right. So I I figure the rolls fit in there much better. See, I use that like that's where I shove my like blow dryer and my curler. Like I put all ah, that stuff smart. in the Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Maybe we'll have to have an unpacked about packing. Let's do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, well, and I forgot, actually, you're making a push for sustainable clothing when yes. it comes to not only your travel clothes, but yes. your personal clothes. Just over 40% of my travel clothes now are all from recycled material. So it's kind of cool. I feel good about that. I still look pretty good, I hope. Um, but I, I feel good about it, and it's it's a J. Crew thing that they've got out there. It's kind of cool. I'm also sure, not sponsored. Also not sponsored, by, but I think that there's probably other, other outlets that have it. Um, but I feel good about it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I love this push towards more sustainable clothing, especially with the rise of like fast fashion sort of taking over, yes. which we're not going to get into because we're not really that sort of podcast. But if you want to share your opinions about it, you know what to do. Probably not, but I'm going to tell you, use the hashtag travel unpacked or let us know in the comments. I love it. Yeah. Or share your share your travel looks with us. Yeah. You know? Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm going to send you a bunch of pictures now. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I'm when I'm away and I want to buy clothes like I'll in Ireland, there's a great clothing store that I go to in Dublin. Suits are 99 euros. Like it's they're so affordable. And I can say, oh, this one's from Ireland. You know? Yeah, I love that. Like, yeah. I'm not much, I don't really do a lot of shopping in destination, but I have been trying to think about that more a little pragmatically and like, am I saving the space that I need or is there something I you can get to. here that's a higher value than you can get in the States? Or yeah. Absolutely, because we often think about the high-end stores when we go to Italy or Greece or Spain. Really, just go to the local stores because those are the best. They've got the best materials and the best value. 
Yeah, absolutely. So thank you both so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed coming on the podcast and talking about fashion. Absolutely. Loved it. It had me back anytime. Love that. Okay, that was going to be my follow-up. Did we scare you away or Not will yet. you be back? <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> but we will be back as a show next week with a brand new episode, so be sure to tune in. And as always, this podcast is brought to you by KHM Travel Group, a leading host agency for independent travel agents. So head to khmtravel.com to learn more or start your travel agent journey. Bye!